Lou Reed when he did his Berlin tour and he came on stage wearing an ill-fitting black leather jacket with white pan-stick makeup and thick black eyeliner and he was obviously on drugs or acting as if he was. And Lou Reed's look also inspired the creators of a small rock and roll musical, The Rocky Horror Show. Jim Sharman, who directed it, and Richard O'Brien were both big Lou Reed fans and they had seen the Transformer color. More than the Bowie connection, it was the Lou Reed connection. And that was, that sold them on me and I came in and I shot the production stills. Throw open the switches on the sonic oscillator and step up the reactor power input three more points. In 1972, Richard O'Brien was understudying in Jesus Christ Superstar. Robert Stigwood decided that um, I wasn't to, to take over the role. I guess I wasn't suited for it anyway. Um, thereby being in breach of contract, they paid me off. They gave me 300 quid, as I remember. And I went home and wrote the Rocky Horror Show. Uh, if I hadn't been fired, you see, I might not have done that. Um, so all those people who have been made redundant of late, you know, lost the job. Don't worry, don't fret, go home and write a rock and roll show. Um, and it'll serve you well. Pop stars past and present flock to see this amazing piece of rock and roll theatre. Even Bowie checked it out. He'd already seen it a couple of times. I mean, David was like he is now. If there's something really hot, new, edgy thing going on, David wants to know about it. It's hard for people to realise now, but because it's such a, a tourist kind of, you know, everybody, the whole, the whole world's kind of, you know, gone to see the Rocky Horror Show now, and it's become some kind of event where people kind of... It's been very much a straight thing now, whereas before, then it, it wasn't. It was, again, all part of this era of the bisexual. First time he'd ever really heard about transsexuals on stage, you know, and it was fascinating. What was wonderful about it at the time was its absolute ability to put into words and drama what most people were living out in real life. Pete Burns, from, who later became well known in Dead or Alive, he saw, went down to London and saw the Rocky Horror Show and you know that was definitely a big influence on his particular uh, blend of transvestism and the whole you know cross-dressing um, aspect of Frankenfurter. He was an icon of my generation, definitely. I was watching the uh, Rocky Horror film yet again and the picture of the lift coming down with Tim Curry tapping his feet and he's got the white um, platform uh, patent boots on and that makeup is the very epitome of glam rock. And that famous corset that's been copied and worn by millions of Rocky Horror fans around the world was actually stolen from another show. Originally, I got started on Rocky in, a, I think, quite an odd way, actually, because I'd, I'd been up at the Glasgow Citizens, this was in the early 70s, um, which was actually my first job as a designer. I was assistant designer up there. Um, and I'd, in fact, as it happened, worked with Tim Curry. He was up there at the same time. We'd done The Maids, Jean and Jean Ed, play together, directed by Lindsay Kemp which in fact had involved a certain amount of cross-dressing. Sue Blaine um, had just started working there and she made, the, she made the costumes. We had absolutely no money to spend at all, as I remember. She suggested that we went to Paddy's Market. Pissing down it was. I was looking for corsets. I knew exactly how the costume should look and I did some drawings. She pointed to this disgusting kind of bit of tat, you know, pissed on, rained on, shat on. <laughs> so Lindsay's taddy old corset not only appeared in The Maids, but showed up in the original Rocky Horror Show. How do you feel about that, Lindsay? Mortified. Mortified when the curtain went up. And there was the, the bloody costume. And the Tim Curry, old oh, oh, souffle, I think, you know, just kind of, you know, popped it in their bag. And speaking of stealing, did Malcolm McLaren borrow any of his ideas for punk rock from the original Rocky Horror Show? I think Rocky Horror um, definitely influenced punk. Yes, it undoubtedly did. I denied it for years out of embarrassment. When I first saw the Rocky Horror Show, it was on the King's Road in a small cinema, not more than 200 yards from my shop. Malcolm McLaren used to come along to the King's Road Theatre to see how it was done. 
as he does with most things in life. He goes along and sees how it's, how it's done and then goes home and tells everybody else that he invented it. And the evidence? Little Nell, for instance, with her brightly coloured socks and tap shoes with glitter on and fishnets and, and striped shorts. and That look is free punk. You've got Sue Blaine and you've got the outfits and you've got and Richard O'Brien and all the safety pins and, of course, the safety pins. That is one of the punk links, too. I mean, it's all there in Rocky Horror. And, of course, that became a whole aesthetic unto itself. <laughs>